Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk to you a bit about polynomial functions and their tables of values. So what I have for you here uh, are three polynomial functions and their table of values, and I've also taken their first differences, second differences, and so on, okay? So I'm going to get you guys to take a look at the, the first one in the top left there. What we have here is uh, y equals 7x, which is a linear function you might recognize, uh, and as such it is a degree 1 polynomial function. Okay, so uh, I'm going to actually take a look at that first differences that we calculated there on the table values, and we get a constant value of 7. So as you know, when you have a linear uh, function, you get constant first differences. Uh, and I'm also going to point to you that the uh, constant first differences are equal to 7. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do, and this is going to seem kind of weird at first, but I will explain it in a moment. I'm going to rewrite that 7 in a very specific way. Okay, again, it'll look a little bit weird, but it will be explained soon. So uh, the constant differences in this case are going to be equal to 7 times 1, right? Which is, of course, 7, so we get constant differences of 7, right? So uh, again, I will be explaining that soon. Okay, uh, next thing I'm going to get you guys to do is I'm going to get you to take a look at the second uh, table of values, right? We have y equals 7x squared. Uh, and uh, we, of course, know that that is a degree 2 polynomial function now. Um, and if you take a look at the first differences in blue there, uh, we don't get constant first differences like we would expect because it is a quadratic function. Uh, but we do get constant second differences, which, again, we would sort of expect with this kind of function, right? So we get constant second differences. Uh, and I want you to notice that they're equal to, uh, equal to 14. So our constant second differences are equal to 14. Uh, again, I'm going to actually rewrite that uh, second difference in a very uh, interesting way. So uh, 14, well, that's equal to 7 times 2 times 1. Okay, so again, this will be explained uh, very soon. Uh, and I'm going to get you guys to look, take a look at the third table of values. So for this one, we have y equals 7x cubed. Okay, this is a degree 3 polynomial function, of course. And I want you to notice that uh, if you look at the first differences, we do not get constant first differences. If you look at the second differences, you do not get constant second differences either. But if you do look at the third differences, you get constant third differences. Okay? Um, so that's kind of interesting. When we had a degree 1 polynomial function, we had constant first differences. When we had a degree 2 polynomial function, we had constant second differences. When we get a degree 3 polynomial function, we get constant third differences. Well, we got a pattern going on here, right? So the idea is that whenever you have a polynomial function of degree n, if you take the nth differences, then you're going to get constant values. So for example, if you had a degree 10 polynomial function, taking the 10th differences would give you constant values. Okay, so I want you to take a look <clears throat> at the third differences again here, uh, and notice that we have a value of 42. Uh, I'm going to rewrite 42 in a very specific way here. <clears throat> so 42 is actually equal to 7 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so that's actually equal to 42. And so now I'm actually going to talk about why I'm rewriting it in this really weird way. So uh, let's take a look back at our first table of values for a second. Uh, and I'm going to get you guys to notice that the, uh, the leading coefficient of our, uh, our, our line right, is actually going to be 7. That's the leading coefficient of our degree 1 polynomial function. And that's actually where this 7 comes from in the way I wrote it. Okay, that's where that 7 comes from. So I get 7 times 1. Uh, also notice that 1 is the degree of the polynomial function. Okay, let's take a look at the second one. So uh, the degree of our uh, degree 2 polynomial function, right, well, it's, it's obviously going to be, oh, sorry, not the degree, sorry, the leading coefficient of our degree 2 polynomial function is 7, just like the first one. And again, that's where that 7 comes from. And of course, we're multiplying 7 by 2 times 1. Well, this 2, right, that 2 is the degree of our polynomial function, Okay. Let's take a look at the third one. So uh, for our degree 3 polynomial function, our leading coefficient is 7. right? And again, that's where this 7 comes from. And of course, we're multiplying that by 3 times 2 times 1. Well, this 3 here, that comes from the degree of the polynomial function. So you're probably starting to see a kind of pattern going on here. Uh, it looks like if we take the leading coefficient of our polynomial function, and then we multiply it by uh, its degree, and every number, every whole number less than its degree, we get the value that the constant difference is going to be equal to, okay? 
Um, so that's actually another property. Now, now the thing is, having to write you know seven times three times two times one is sort of a, a sort of a messy way of doing things. So um, that three times two times one part, we actually have a, a, a kind of interesting way of writing that. So instead of having to write you know three times two times one every single time, uh, we can write something a bit easier. And uh, in order to tell you what that is, I'm going to have to introduce you guys to a new operator that you probably haven't seen before. Maybe you have, but I don't think you have. Um, and that operator is called the factorial operator. Okay, so we have the factorial operator. Now you're going to notice I have a little exclamation mark at the at the top of my page here. Uh, I'm not saying factorial operator in a in a excited way or anything like that. Uh, that's actually what the factorial operator looks like. And what the factorial operator looks like is. Um, it's going to be a number with uh, with it looks like an exclamation mark at the end of it. And what that does is it takes that number, that whole number, and it multiplies it by every whole number less than that until you get down to one. So like, for example, if I have something like 5 factorial, that's how you say that, 5 factorial, right? I'm not, I'm not saying 5 in a loud way or anything. It's 5 factorial. Well, that's going to be equal to, well, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so whatever that's equal to. I guess it would be equal to, uh, let's see... Um, I think it's 120, okay? So that's what 5 factorial would be equal to, all right? Uh, or, for, as another example, if we wanted to do 10 factorial, right, that would be uh, equal to 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, okay? Uh, and I am not going to give you a full full value for that one. That's a very large number. So, um yeah, just keep in mind that uh, that this is how the factorial operator works, all right? This is going to be useful to us because, uh, essentially, if we take the leading coefficient of a polynomial function and then the degree, let's say it's degree n, right? If we do the leading coefficient times n factorial, then we're going to get the degree of the constant nth differences. Okay, so we're just going to kind of summarize what we talked about here in, in this, uh, this video. So the first thing that we mentioned uh, was that uh, a polynomial function uh, of degree n will have constant nth differences. Okay, so again, if you have a seven degree, seventh degree polynomial function, if you take the seventh differences, you're going to get constant seventh differences, essentially. Okay, uh, the second thing that we mainly talked about uh, was that a polynomial function uh, of degree n, but with a leading coefficient of a, right, it's going to have constant differences which are equal to a times n factorial. So again, a is our leading coefficient, n is the degree, so you do a times n factorial. Okay, guys? So I uh, hope this helps. Take care.